So we're here with Pam Shriver at the BCF Tennis Challenge. Now, Pam, tell us a little bit about this event for our audience. How did it get started? What was the idea behind it? And how long have you been doing it? Well, back in 1985, when I was about seven years into my playing, six, seven years into my playing career, decided I wanted to have a charity tennis event in my hometown. I'd never played a set of professional tennis in my hometown. So, 1986, we had our first event. It was at Loyola College uh, over Thanksgiving weekend. Chris Everett, Martina Navratilova, two of my best friends, were early regulars, and I didn't know it would go on for now our 24th version tonight. And, you know, it's fun to be able to bring today's stars with a few of the great champions of the past together with a team tennis format. And talk to us a little bit about the charities that this event is supporting. Well, the Baltimore Community Foundation is our umbrella charity. They've been our partner since 1990. When we first started it, all the proceeds went to cystic fibrosis research. And then we started to branch out and wanted and want to help more charities give out grants to different children's related charities mostly. So while we've still given out grants to cystic fibrosis research, we help everything from homeless shelters to literacy charities who help kids learn how to read better, um, Baltimore tennis patrons, uh, keeping the sport of tennis healthy in the inner city and around Baltimore has been really important to us. And our website, tennischallenge.org, has the full list of all the charities we've helped through the years. It's a long one. Let's, uh, let's change gears real quick. We do a lot of online instruction. And talk to us a little bit about how the game has changed over the last 20 years and what adjustments, if you're playing a pro-am, do you make if you're hitting against somebody like Melanie Udan? Well, the game has changed a ton. The equipment's changed. The stringing has changed. You know, when I started in 78, it was still a lot of players with continental forehand grips, a lot of one-handed backhands. Not too many people hit over the ball on the backhand. You know, the swing volley, the big swing volley that we see all the time now wasn't, uh, wasn't almost a shot back then. So power's coming into the game more, more the western forehand, the big topspin shots, two-handed backhands. You know, besides Federer and a few others at the top, it's mostly all two-handed backhands. Um, Justine Anna, it's good to see her coming back with her great one-handed backhand. Uh, Moresmo, the other great one-handed backhand in the last 10 years in the women's game, she's retiring. So I always like to see the variety of the one-handed backhand. But, you know, foot speed is important and is universal, and, um, you know, power is really important. So you would say the footwork is something that's remained consistent. What's the same now versus 20 years ago, 30 years ago? You know what is always the same is the mental side and your ability to handle pressure in the big moments. All the great champions can embrace the biggest moments and still produce. And Johnny McEnroe did that. Lindsay Davenport did that. Uh, Serena Williams, Venus, um, you know, all the great champions can handle pressure, whether it's 20, 30, 50 years ago or today. Thanks, Pam. Good luck with the event. Thank you.